Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, for today's devotion with Brother Frank from Zurich, we greet all brothers and sisters worldwide in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and thanks be to the Lord that we can still live in the time of grace. We still have free access to the throne of grace. In a moment, everything can change so that the mercy seat turns into judgment seat. People can also be suddenly taken out of life. This was also the case with Dieter Jochem, who went home in February. A dear brother, a faithful warrior for Christ, is no more and is missing in our ranks. He was ready to meet the Lord and may now see what he believed. Oh, how thankful we can be that we may believe God's holy word from the heart to be among those who wait upon the Lord. The faithful Lord has called us out, separated us, and with his help we may now experience the preparation and completion. May today serve that we may go forward under the sound of His Word with His blessing and grace and reach full maturity. Let us look today in faith only to Jesus and the finished redemption that we may be fully revived, strengthened and blessed. We want to see the arm of God revealed today, for He is still the same. May the grace of God and His peace, which is higher than all understanding, be with us all in a special way today. Before we pray, I would like to read a word from James 5. James 5, I read verses 7 to 20. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, 
lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. So far this precious and holy word. In this precious word we have a real basis for the truth of healing. God heals in two ways. In verse 15 it is written, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The Lord is so faithful. He has done all he could do for us. Jesus is the victor. Let us pray. Lord our God, from the bottom of our hearts we thank you for today's special day of grace, for another day of salvation, of preparation, for your glorious coming. Lord, you have done great things all these years, especially in this place and we sense that you have much more in store for us. O oh God, your return is near. Help us to establish our hearts. Give us strength of faith and courage of faith to stand firm and persevere patiently. May the Spirit of God come upon us all. Today we want to bring everything under the blood of the Lamb, so that all the powers of the enemy must flee. We want to honor you through faith and obedience. Lord, you know our sorrows and needs and difficulties. Thou knowest our heart's desire, and we thank Thee that our prayers and our cry of desperation are heard. Give grace to speak and grace to hear, and strengthen the carrier of the Word, your faithful servant, our beloved brother Frank. Bless us together from the riches of your grace, beyond asking and understanding. 
May biblical faith come forth today that powerfully confirms the word. To you, the only true God, be all glory, praise, thanksgiving and worship. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I too would like to send you very warm greetings from Zurich and wish you all God's richest blessings from the bottom of my heart. May all those who have written their emails and sent greetings also be blessed. Today's broadcast is dedicated to a special theme, namely the opening of the seven seals. But first, we are grateful for the word of introduction read by Brother Baumgartner. It is simply that the Bible passages that speak of the return of Jesus Christ are the most important ones to be read and taken to heart now. We also look out into the world and notice everything that is going on and also especially to Russia and Ukraine. What pain! What pain! Thousands and thousands of families are being torn apart. How many dead? For what? For what? But what can one say? After all, it is written that in the end times, wars, earthquakes, famines, costly times will happen and will come. And all this is really happening before our eyes, especially also the climate change. Yes, but not only climate change, the change of humanity. People want to turn women into men and men into women. Now it should no longer be addressed, dear ladies and gentlemen, now it should only be addressed, dear all. That is how it is to be said now. Men and women are no longer to be addressed, but dear all. One no longer knows what one can or should say about everything. But the scriptures are being fulfilled before our eyes. But our attention is mainly focused on what concerns the church the promises that the Lord has given us. Everything else we perceive and can confirm and say, today this scripture, this scripture, this scripture, today everything is fulfilled that the Lord has foretold. And we are very grateful that we are allowed to live in this time. 
It is really the end of the end times, the last period before the return of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we now return briefly to two verses from the word that was read to us in order to bring home to us the seriousness of what is really at stake now. Let us read the two verses from James 5. Here you go. We read from James 5, verse 7 and 8. James 5, verse 7 and 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Thanks be to the Lord, that he makes us mindful to stand firm, to persevere, to remain faithful, for he who perseveres to the end will be crowned. All believers in the 2000 years have been waiting for the return of the Lord, and all have expected the Lord to return. But God has a timetable, and everything happens according to it. We all know that in the Old Testament there was a total of 4,000 years from Adam to Christ. And we now have 2,000 years of the New Testament. And there's only the seventh millennium left. And then time stops and eternity begins. And we are just so thankful that before the last millennium, before the day of the Lord, the faithful God sent his servant and prophet to give us the last message, and that is the original message of the Word of God, just as the first message was, so must the last be. And just as the Bible teachings were proclaimed in the beginning, so they must be proclaimed 100% the same in the end as they were in the beginning. Whether it concerns the fall, whether it concerns the Bible subjects, especially about the Godhead, about water baptism, about the Lord's Supper, about the first resurrection, about the second resurrection. All these biblical truths must be proclaimed in the original. And for this, God could use Brother Brenham 
to proclaim the word to us anew in the original. For so it is written in Matthew 17, he will restore all things, just as Elijah took the twelve stones and built up the altar of the Lord, and the people of God had to make the decision as to whom they would serve, so it has happened in our time. The doctrine of the Twelve Apostles, with which the New Testament Church is crowned and built upon the foundation of the Apostles and Prophets, without interpretation, without explanation, just to believe, as the Scriptures say. So, beloved brothers and sisters, let us say it again, it needed to be emphasized. Be patient, therefore, unto the return of the Lord. And did you notice, both verses have the word return in them. It's just so important, because we have now arrived right before the return of Jesus Christ. We need to call out to one another, be patient, persevere, trust in the Lord, don't become impatient, but tell the Lord, I want to be ready for your coming. I believe that you will come again in our time, and I want to be among those who are ready when you come again. But again, be it emphasized, persevere as the prophets persevered, as Job persevered, until what God had promised him was fulfilled. He could say, as he sat on the ash heap, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Upon him came the heaviest trial. The whole family was shattered. One bad news after another. And yet he remained faithful. Today, when we look into the homes and families of believers, there are hardships everywhere. But be assured of this. Say it. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that I belong to the Bright Church. You all know, and we will briefly go into the two things today. On the 11th of June, 1933, and then March, 1963, the Lord really gave grace. And when you think about the fact that 90 years will have passed in June, when the Lord commissioned Brother Brenham to bring the message that was to forerun the second coming of Christ, 
And it did forerun. And then think about how he was told on February the 28th, 1963, from the supernatural cloud, he was told, return to Jeffersonville for the time to open the seven seals has come. But let us still read the verses. Here you go. We read from Zechariah 10, verse 1. Zechariah 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Ask the Lord, brothers and sisters, we must not just talk about or preach about the early and latter rain. We must personally ask that this rain, early and latter rain, not only falls, but falls on us, that we are fertilized. The normal, natural comparison has been made, how the rain fertilizes the field. Imagine, if no rain had fallen, then no sowing could have taken place at all. The rain is necessary to make the land fertile, that it can be sown in the first place. And therefore, latter and early rain must fall, and the soil in our hearts must be prepared so that the word can fall into a soil on which the early and latter rain falls. On it then falls the word for this time and then comes to pass what the Lord has said and promised. So, don't just talk about the early and latter rain, but ask for it. Fall on me, Lord, bless me with the blessing of the early and latter rain. Prepare me, prepare the soil of my heart for it, so that your word of promise can fall on it and bear fruit and what God has promised can then be fulfilled. Oh, may the Lord make the dear word that Brother Baumgarten has read to us from the epistle of James. Follow us all and abide with us until the return of the Lord. We read on. We read from 1 John 2, verse 28. 1 John 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. May this word also fall into every heart. We are meant today Today, the Lord speaks to us personally, 
so that we do not pass by what is to happen now and is indeed already taking place. For we have heard the last message and we believe with all our hearts, but we must be in the matter with all seriousness, not just thinking about a meeting casually, but be aware of the meetings where God's word is proclaimed so that we may experience our preparation under the sound of the word, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and that none of us turns out to be left behind. Oh, thanks be to God, from the bottom of our hearts, that His Word will accomplish in us what God has sent it to do. Here you go. We read from Philippians 1, verse 6. Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, this very word I can say with conviction that all who now believe with all their hearts that God has sent Brother Brenham as a promised prophet and has brought the divine message to us anew that all with whom God has began will complete to the glorious day of the return of Jesus Christ. And we are thankful. And as one more verse added, here you go, Philippians 1, verse 10, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Bride Church is washed in the blood of the Lamb, cleansed in the Word of God, fully redeemed, fully delivered, fully consecrated to God, without spot, without wrinkle, sanctified in the word of truth. And we are grateful to God that here, every time, the day of Christ is spoken of, when He will come again, to take his own home, that we are truly found in the will of God, in faith, in obedience. And because we do not know when the moment will be, therefore let us be ready daily, hourly, that when the Lord comes again, we will be ready to enter with Him into glory. I repeat what has been read. I too am convinced that the Lord God has began His work in you, in me, in all of us, 
who believe His promises and have part in what He is doing right now. He who called us, who pardoned us, who gave us revelation, who began His work in us, He will finish it on the day of His coming. And thank God, we will appear before Him blameless. Hallelujah! Praise be to the name of the Lord. Here you go. We read from Revelation 5, verse 1 to 5. Revelation 5, verse 1 to 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Thanks be to the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, I have on my heart to say just a few words about this. We are now in March, in March, and exactly 60 years ago, from March the 17th to March the 24th, 1963, Brother Brenham preached on the seven seals by divine commission. Brothers and sisters, I was with Brother Brenham just a short time before, and he told me that he had to go to Arizona, that there he would be given instruction as to what should happen. And you all know what happened. He went there and it happened. It happened on the 28th of February, 1963, when the supernatural cloud, which is known to all, came down, a mighty storm, a thunderstorm, thunders rang out, lightning struck, treetops fell, but then there was a gentle whispering, and the supernatural cloud came down. All the other clouds were no more, just the supernatural cloud under the blue sky. And Brother Brenham stood there on the mountain 
And there, out of that supernatural cloud into which he was veiled in, he was told, Return to Jeffersonville, for the seven seals will be opened. Brothers and sisters, I have seen it all. I have seen the trees and the broken off tips of the trees. I have witnessed everything that has happened through the ministry of Brother Brenham since 1955. And I am grateful to God from the bottom of my heart. But now comes the point. This event was of such tremendous significance. We read it in Revelation 5. No one in heaven or on earth was worthy to take the book. No prophet, no apostle, no one was worthy but the Lion of the tribe of Judah overcame, and the Lamb, the Lamb which was slain, the Lamb. And I am so grateful to God that the term Lamb is written 21 times in the chapters of the book of Revelation. For in the Lamb of God, our redemption has taken place. As John the Baptist said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The blood of the Lamb of God has been shed for all who have part in the redemption and we are the sheep of God, the flock of His hand, and He the Good Shepherd. But think about it, dear brothers and sisters, two thousand years have passed, and then comes a 28th of February, 1963, and then comes March 1963. When the book is opened, the seals are revealed. And brothers and sisters, I am so grateful to God. I translated the original book about the seven seals into German. But then I wrote a book quickly and placed everything that Brother Brenham had to say about the seven seals. And it is available. Everybody can have it. If we think about it, in our time, now, before the return of Jesus Christ, and if we may once again remind ourselves to be patient, to persevere until the return of Jesus Christ, 60 years have passed. And now we say and ask, how much longer will it take? I can tell you exactly to the day how long it will take until the last one who belongs to the Bright Church has been added and the number has become full. Then the bridegroom will come and take his bride home. 
and that time is just around the corner. It is really so near that we await the return of our Lord with fear and trembling, but in perfect faith in the promises of God. But here is the question. Have we accepted our preparation? Have we accepted the corrections? Have we biblically received the teaching on the Godhead? You all know, all Christianity believes in a trinity that God exists from eternity in three eternal persons, that the Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit is eternal. But these are all human, destructive doctrines. Our God is one from eternity to eternity. And that is why the Bible repeatedly speaks of there being only one God. But this one only God has revealed himself for our salvation as Father in heaven, in his only begotten Son on earth, and in us through the Holy Spirit, God above us, God with us, God in us. Three revelations of the same God. And we are thankful with all our hearts. In the Old Testament, no prophet and no man spoke of a Son of God or of a Father in heaven. In the 4,000 years, only the Lord God is mentioned, and that a good 6,000 times. But God wanted to make good the fall. Here we actually have a comparison. The Lord God had created Adam in his image and then took Eve out of Adam and brought her to him and said, Be fruitful and fill the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. And what happened? Before Adam could do what he was commanded, the serpent came and seduced Eve. And that is why Cain is not listed even once in the genealogy as the son of Adam. And the Holy Scriptures do tell us where he came from. And God saw in the Garden of Eden with pain, with great pain, that his created humanity, Adam and Eve, had fallen into transgression, and all of mankind that followed them was plunged into death, plunged into destruction. And all those who were naturally begotten, all the billions of human beings who have lived on earth, have also all died. But God was about having sons and daughters with him for eternity. And that's why he overshadowed Mary. And here was no fleshly begetting as in the Garden of Eden. Here was a spirit begetting. Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, 
and that which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And so God has made the new beginning, the new creation, that in the Son of God all sons and daughters of God receive their redemption. They were made good again. And so the Lord God has made children of God out of children of men. And we have been born again through the seed of the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit. So, God has made a new beginning and we may belong to it. And with that we come to the end. Oh, God bless you and be with you all. Once again, we greet everyone, especially all ministering brethren from Zurich. May the blessing of Almighty God rest upon all ministering brethren. May they pass on the food and distribute the revealed word. May the blessing of Almighty God be upon all who have heard the last call, the invitation, and have come out of all and have come into the word of promise. God bless you and be with you all. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.